Hi, and welcome to the Selected Tech Podcast, brought to you by a group of four MVPs doing webinars, sessions, and interviews on all things SharePoint, Office 365, and the Microsoft AI ecosystem. Their motto is, learn, share, reuse. And here they are, Albert Yan, Rick, Stefan, and Tommy. Hi, welcome at another episode of the Selected Tech webinar. Tonight, we're going to talk about Mr. OneDrive's bot and what Stefan and Thomas have learned building that bot, actually working with some of the AI components in Azure. So let's walk us through some of the things you encountered, Stefan. Sure, sure. But before we do that, why do you call Tommy Thomas? Yeah. Uh, Oh, I did, oh, I didn't. Oh, I, I texted Yoko in the background. I didn't realize that you called me Thomas, but okay. Yeah. Sorry, sorry about <laughs> it. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, um, set up a little bit the stage. What we did actually, I guess it was in October or November, right, Tommy? I think so, yeah. Um, we sat down with Mr. OneDrive, obviously, Hans Brenda. Um, and we talked a little bit about what he actually does and we found out that he's not only doing a great uh, job in marketing and and, and like represent himself re really good but he's really a lot of knowledge uh, in terms of OneDrive, OneDrive for Business and so on and so forth um, and he knows stuff which we, we which we have never thought about even and so we came to the idea uh, why not making making something out of it? Uh, and therefore, um, it was quite clear that that some kind of new uh, new service or or new newly uh, new user interface or whatever um, could be of benefit for for him as well as for us. So um, what we did basically is to uh, start a new initiative called Mr. OneDrive Spot. Um, and as the name says, it's a bot, um, which in the end should be available as a Teams app. Um, and everyone uh, which or, or who is who is um, either willing to learn stuff about OneDrive from an end user perspective, as well as from an admin perspective, can just install the app from the Teams app store if it's available. Uh, and then ask Hans some questions uh, in form of his bot. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I, I, yeah, for the ones who are watching the uh, the webinar, it's uh, I found the link to his uh, blog post. Okay. Yeah, there's yeah. a blog post out there. We have now launched the public um, beta. So if any one of you guys is uh, or wants to join the the public beta, just sign up for it. There's a little form where we just ask for your email address to send you the Teams app manifest. You can install it or sideload it from your uh, Teams client um to just get your hands on it um we also want to get early feedback from from users uh, especially the ones uh, who are using a foreign language like spanish italian dutch french what have you to to test out the translation as well because this was the most trickiest part um as of now to to get the translation working yeah i can see it here the bottom stands 50 languages so yeah cool. yeah so um Maybe maybe I'll share my screen and I'll walk you, yeah. you guys through a bit um, mm -hmm. to see what happens actually um, from from a more technical side of things. And so Stefan just mentioned that now you will get uh, the Teams application as a package to sideload, but of course the overall goal is to have this available in the global Teams store. But yeah. Need some time we need to set up everything because we want to make it right this means to have all the legal information on hans page to make sure that everything is set up and and in a in a correct way and i think it will take us some weeks to yeah. have oh, yeah, the bot in the in the global store but yeah i can help you with that with the store my uh, app just got it published in the store today so cool ah, congrats yeah. nice give me a few calls and a few changes but <laughs> so this is the, the yeah it's all the small stuff that really matters for the store you have to have a description that's between 400 and 3000 words and stuff okay. like that so yeah oh well so this means this is the the last oh, maybe now with rick because now he's earning money with his apps and <laughs> yeah, no, he's no, getting all, all, crazy all rich apps in teams are free <laughs> but 
Yeah, we have some some uh, ideas around that, but maybe yeah. not, <laughs> let's not talk you, about you, that. You now. guys maybe understand the German difference between gratis and umsonst. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have the same thing. <laughs> but sorry, Stefan, go ahead. So um, what we see here is basically the Teams application, or basically it's just not the the, the real Teams app itself. It's just the the chat with the with the bot. So obviously, what you can do is to ask questions, um, like who is Hans actually, um, and there we we get some uh, some sm some small description around Hans. Um, as you as you can see here. Hans is, has gone crazy concerning the formatting of the uh, answers. So he used every markdown uh, type possible. Guys? Stefan, I, yeah, I, yeah, I think I, you're just muted. Yeah. Stefan just muted himself. Yep. Looks like. But he's trying now. Yeah, he's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just look. See him talking. Yeah. And he's on the wrong mic. <laughs> so. Strange. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh. Back. Uh, but this is my, my webcam microphone, so I guess the sound is not crystal clear anymore. It's, no. it's, it's a. Okay, I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So for me, it sounds okay. -ish. Yeah. This is this is strange. I need to get a a new headset. So, yeah, anyways. Proper one. Yeah, proper one. Or we so should anyways. do a, a webinar about using clean feed. <laughs> <laughs> Would have saved us two hours already the last couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, anyways, um, as you can see, Hans has gone crazy concerning the the markdown support. Um, he used everything which is supported and not even documented. Um, so he even um, used uh, GIFs within messages, and that's possible. Um, but it's not possible on the mobile version. It's just possible on the on the web and the desktop version of Teams. So um, he's really gone crazy um, with his with his answers in the knowledge base. Um, what you also obviously can do is. We see uh, the English version of the answer in here. If I now type in um, the German equivalent uh, of who is Hans, where is Hans, where is Hans, um, we get the same in German. Um, and by now we use not only one knowledge base for the for the whole stuff, but we use two. We started using um, a German knowledge base, and we wanted to translate everything which is not German into German to get the correct answer and then retranslate it back to the user's language. But what we found out actually is that the translation from and to German isn't working that properly. So we switched now to a new uh, type of architecture where we use a German language knowledge base and an English one. Um, and if somebody, for example, does this, ask something in Italian, get the the uh, language um, go to the English uh, knowledge base first translate it into English go to the English knowledge base translate it back to Italian and then um, come back with the answer and as you can see here um, the cognitive service for text translation is messing up the markdown a bit um, because it somehow tr wants to translate um, question marks uh, and yeah. the the brackets and stuff like that into really strange symbols like ambassons and, and so on or if you work with bullet points it wants to translate the asterisk into dots for whatever reason so yeah, i know it can work with html but yeah Mark, yeah you can work of obviously with html but i don't want to actually get the answer back and translate that to HTML yeah. and it's a bit tricky so I'm, I'm a bit a bit struggling with with doing that uh, properly with with some regex expressions right now to figure out if there's some kind of formatting in there if there's some formatting in there I'll save that strings into 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 an array translate it 
and then uh, replace those um, translated uh, strings with the with the actual ones and re retranslate that and so on. So it's a bit tricky from that angle, um, but from the other from the other side of things, um, the, the the translation, the content itself is really good. It's really it's it's understandable. Um, so I don't know if I. I've just gone to Google Translate and inserted what's the difference between OneDrive and OneDrive for Business and I wanted to translate it in Dutch. Is that the correct meaning for that? Yeah, it's correct. So if yeah, I now go ahead... We sometimes use OneDrive for Business. It's, yeah, it's easier to use the English word. Yeah, of course. But if I now go ahead and insert just that, um, I hope mm -hmm. that this would make some sense. Yeah. Looks good. We, we even have the, the formatting support in there with the bold texts. Um, so it's getting there. Uh, it's not, yeah, not perfect good. yet, um, but it's getting there. And it's, it's way better with, with using English as a, as a base language for all the translations yeah. compared yeah. to using German. And the second, the second thing about having those different types is if you, if you know Hans and his personality, you can also basically read between the lines in his German way of writing. And this is his, his character, his personality, and we don't want to move this away. So that if you ask in German, it shouldn't be a translated uh, sentence back from English. It should be Hans words. That's, that was yeah. also important to have it, his personality in his, his bot, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and what's actually behind the scenes is I've started with the with the core bot template to get at least the language understanding bits and bit uh, parts in there, um, and to have at least some some pre-built dialogues in there. Um, and then what I actually did is I've created or I've came up with with a middleware for the translation, where I just say on each turn um, I want to actually get the user's message. Then I wanna first of all detect the the language. So I call the text translator and say, um, "Here's the message the user has inserted or sent me. Please give me um, the language code of that message." And I store that into my state to have it uh, for 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 reusing it later on. And then what I do is if the language isn't English or German, um, I go to the text translator again and ask for um, the translation into English, of course, because I want to want to want to query the knowledge base with the English um, with the English question. Mm -hmm. um, and if that's actually finished, um, I have this. I have a second. Um, function which is the on sync uh, on send activities which actually does the opposite so each message which is going out from the bot to the user um, uses the same uh, uses the same functionality so in here I have three tasks I can edit messages I can edit attachments and I can even edit suggested actions and if I want to edit the I'll just scroll, scroll down to the edit message. Um, I get the original language from the user again. Then do some regex magic for string uh, for the for the link replacement and for the for the bold replacement. And what I do afterwards is um, to call the text translator again. In here, um, retranslate it into. Dutch, for example, and then just replace the the links again with the original uh, link text. So with the uh, brackets, alt text, and then the href. And it's not finished yet because um, it works fine for links, but we still have the the English um, value in there. Then, so I need to retranslate the display text of the link into the into the user's original language. And it doesn't work for images in some time, as as we saw earlier, because um, the image has a 
uh, has a symbol um, in front of it, which gets translated sometimes and sometimes not. So I need to to do the same for for images as well. And as you can see here, this is also a weird behavior. Sometimes it fills in um, blank spaces by by yeah. translating it. So I don't okay. know why yet. Um, but I need to figure out that as well. And um, it's a, a, yeah. a question in terms of of how are you at the moment working as a, as a developer with the tool. So you obviously work with, with Visual Studio and yeah. when you deploy something or test something, you're using a local tool or you're not always deploying to Azure your latest changes. No, I ju I'm just, um, for, for testing, I'm just running and running it locally. Mm -hmm. Uh, and depending on the case, either testing in the emulator or testing it via ng rock um to to get the teams uh ui okay and the teams functionality out of it yeah and teams if I, sometimes quirky yeah yeah that's the that's, yeah, that's most, the thing I do most, most of my testing in teams as well because it's uh, yeah against we the, found out the emulator it's different yeah we found out and this was a pretty hard task to find out first first i did the testing only locally and then when I said, okay, it's now working, I just deployed it to my um, DevOps repo and then the build and release pipeline kicked in and then deployed it to Azure. Um, and locally, when we work with images, like in that case, it works just fine. And Hans, obviously, he just uh, tested it within Teams. And for him, the images won't render. And I was like, I don't know what's the case there because I can test it locally uh, on the on the emulator, works fine. I can test it in the Azure um, portal emulator, it works fine there. But in Teams, it doesn't work. Um, and at some point after a few weeks, I discovered a minor sentence in the docs somewhere hidden that the images uh, are not allowed to be bigger than I don't know one thousand two hundred times, I don't know, 900, some strange dimension. Uh, and the, the funny thing was that he then tested it with those dimensions with his pictures and some pictures were larger, which have then been rendered and some won't be rendered. So <laughs> it's a pretty, pretty random behavior when, when pictures are rendered and when, okay. when pictures are not rendered. And the same is true for, we still haven't found out why this? Where this? Uh, where there's a huge blank space um, between an image and the text? Because if I go to the knowledge base in there, um, let's take the English one. There shouldn't be any any blank spaces in there. There should at least be just one um, new line. So, question was who is Hans? And it's just. Um, Where is it? Yeah, it's the first line. It's... Yeah. There's it. Yeah. Just one. And it's pretty strange. The, another but, cool yes, thing yeah. you see here is that, that Hans came up with the idea of numbering his questions. So he, yeah. he added alternative questions with a, a number code. So you see here E001. And mm -hmm. I think now he, he already out of experience went with a three digit code because he know that we have more than a hundred um, yeah. but he is now just referencing questions like e24 e33 and i think he, I he yeah. yeah yeah it's way faster way faster yeah. and he, he told us he works with two uh big screens one with the english knowledge base open one with the german ones and he just send the numbers have the same thing so it's d one and d2 in his german thing and then it's just left to right and and moving forward with this so you see his experience in how to optimize uh it tools to to save time it's interesting to see how he approaches those things and he's right. as you as you can see also gone crazy about the follow-up prompt so i guess he 
hardly has any questions without follow-up prompts. So for each question you ask, you immediately get a follow-up prompt um, represented um, to just kind of yeah. uh, guide the user through the conversation. This is also cool. This is what I, what I want to show you now. Um, he also thought about navigation within the chatbot. So if you ask, um, for example, how can I configure files on demand and he's pretty, pretty um, extensive talking about GPOs and stuff like that. So he has a top 10 of GPOs for OneDrive. Mm -hmm. And if you ask now a question about one GPO, you immediately get um, the other ones represented as well. Yeah. Top six. So you go one, um, one step back, top seven, go one step ahead. And so you can actually navigate between his top 10 of GPOs um, and, and tips and tricks of, of managing OneDrive. Can you, can you scroll up a bit back? Because now it's back in English. And it was, yeah, was yeah. In Dutch. the state was just still there at one, yeah. This is also something um, I, don't, I, I haven't figured out why does it sometimes, because this is obviously an English sentence, um, but I can imagine um, as... You can see in my code in here, um, I need to, to provide an, a method to clear the uh, language within my state because I oh, yeah. just do an overwrite and I guess this isn't the, the best thing to do for, for the state it management. It could be that the state is asynchronous and you're already yeah. one step ahead. <clears throat> yeah. Because this is probably only a, a testing thing because who switches languages like that in a normal behavior. Yeah. but yeah. Yeah. Well, I can imagine that if you're asking questions in your native language and then you're like, oh, maybe I should Google it, that you might want to rephrase the same question as English, just yeah. so you get the correct terminology that you could use yeah. to Google for results. Good point. Yeah. Fair point. Yeah. Or a Bing for results. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. And, and if you want to get it in the store, they will get it. They will test it. <laughs> so yeah. Tell them it's multilingual, then they will test it. <laughs> so it's it's MVP March, and App is already using Bing instead of Google to make sure his renewal is flying this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a good one. <laughs> Wait, what, what's Google? <laughs> 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 But you, you see here that, that Hans is really, really, really thinking about the, the user experience and... Yeah, uh, yeah the content is... is yeah. yeah, the content is, is really cool. Also, the images uh, he has in there. This is really, really impressive. And where did he, did, does he, he, he reference images from his blog or did, did, did he copy them and store them, you store them in Azure now? No, he... I guess the most images he has in there are from actually from his blog or um, from docs, but I guess he wants to redo everything um, to, to have it on his blog. Uh, yeah, the, the, the thing is that, from, we, from his blog. that we think of making sure that we own the, the, the place where the refer images are referenced by, because if something changes uh, in, in docs and something somebody moves the article around, then the image is gone. So, yeah, yeah. and they, normally they won't tell us before. So, yeah, you yeah. have to it's give just... a support on something. You have no control over that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you could monitor all changes on the repo, but yeah, I can shoot myself in the knee as well. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, Api, uh, if you have some free time left, yeah, 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 you could join us. I think... Uh, we we should be able to write some tooling for that that just scans <laughs> if images are still available. Yeah, the, the the point is not being able. The point is finding time in your calendar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell me about it. No, but in all seriousness, you all, you guys all know the QA maker. And if you just look at this screen now with follow up questions and prompts and different stuff, so you can imagine how many hours Hans spent yeah, in this fingers, tool. Yeah. And what well, it's really nice to see a. Um, almost enterprise scenario of using Q&A Maker, because yeah. I think we've all seen the demos with 10 questions and the hello saying, hey, cases. Yes, there we yeah. go. And this is actually um, a real knowledge base with real content with yeah. a, a proper use case behind it. So yeah, you have to spend True. sometimes hours to get to those uh, fall, uh, to those kinds of content if you're in the yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the, the thing is also, we started with 
Axel. Yeah, we, we yeah. Let, let's, in, let's say we, we tricked him into it's so easy to do a Q&A. He just needs to fill out an excellent. Yeah. I think he hates me now for that saying that once again. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. and then did, did we switch to yeah. we switch to Q&A maker with not one knowledge base. And now we're <laughs> on Q&A maker with two actually. And just yeah. give him access to this one and the other one and that, that he can fill it yeah. directly. Yeah. Into, yeah. 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 It's really uh, so easy. It's, so. Because this makes no sense to to sync this from a SharePoint list. If you are on, on that level of of managing your content, you need to have access to the knowledge yeah. base. Otherwise, you you get crazy during testing. But because mm -hmm. his his job or his his task now can be described as, I think he has three hundred forty slides on OneDrive for a workshop, uh, and creating sensible questions out of his slide deck and. Uh, create the the user flow in here so it's it's unbelievable and it's it's and like like stefan said he he asked us a question uh, and i just to give you an idea and uh, on, on friday at the the typical gin and tonic time at the, the hotel bar uh one of his his questions is like okay uh we all work in the same uh company uh, i share a file on my, my onedrive with you guys uh we work with that file for let's say three weeks and then I delete it. And how can you, I, I delete it on my synced client, where to restore it and where to restore it so that you have all the versions from the file and yeah. who can only do that. And you can think of it and you, with, you, with your Shepard experience, after one or two guesses, you are there, but it's like, wait, what? It's in this recycle bin and in that recycle bin. And when you guys uh, restore it, it's only one version. But when I restore it, it's from the my uh, site collection uh, recycle bin and they're with all versions. So this can get really, really deep, really, really fast. Yeah, yeah one drive is a different trade. Yeah. <laughs> Specific yeah, sometimes. Definitely. But it's interesting because it's, it's the same sync sync mechanism like a, a regular document library because it's just a SharePoint doc, document library in the end. Yeah, it's still, it's yeah. still, it's still my site in the end. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. nice use case. Yeah. So we we are yeah, looking for yeah, we are looking for people to to test it uh, and give us some some feedback. Yeah. Uh, this the seeing the code reminds me that I need to upload my uh, App Insights work I did to to make sure that we have all the the data uh, to commit it to the project as well. Let's see if I managed to this. Way to, uh, to get into the beta again, just search for Mr. OneDrive bot. Uh, I we will share the the link yeah. and add it to the show notes. It's I think I created a Bitly now with some Mr. OneDrive's beta sign up or something like that. But we will, sh cool. we will share the details. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's it basically. Well, yeah, right. impressive demo. So, yeah. all right. Let's, let's see. That's it for when it's, when it's Let's finished. see. So the the next recording probably will be done in real life, as we hopefully, if everything works out, we all four fly to Redmond in a couple of days. Yep. So, if we're allowed, that's to, the plan. If we're allowed to, yeah. Yeah, if we're allowed to, then we'll uh, yeah. all but get together in a group don't, and let's, do a live let's, one. Let's don't start this discussion now. <laughs> no, no, no. 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 Okay. <laughs> then have a nice week, guys. Yeah, see Thanks. You Thank you. See ya. Bye bye. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening. Make sure to check out the show notes at selectedtech.show to get all the mentioned references. And one more thing please tweet about the podcast and give them a five star review. This really helps the guys a lot. Thank you and see you next time. Bye.